Welcome to the Every Nation Dorado Congregation. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Here's a look at this week's announcements. Today, we start our mid-year fast till Saturday, 24th of July, during which we dedicate ourselves to corporate prayer, fasting, and consecration. We meet for corporate prayer on Zoom from Monday to Friday every morning from 6 to 6.30, at noon from 10 past 1 to quarter to 2, and in the evenings from 6 to 7. All Zoom links are on our website, on our events page. On Saturday, we will close with a time of celebration at 6, also on Zoom. Join our Discover Spiritual Family on the 7th of August. Come and learn more about who we are as a church and consider membership. Please register on our website on the events page. Children's church services are being held on Zoom with your children on Sundays. We encourage parents to log into the Zoom classes from 9 a.m. for our 6 to 9 year olds and 9.45 for our 10 to 13 year olds. If you are not on the parents comms group, please send a direct message to Pastor Caroline on 081-395-7919 to be added. All Zoom links are shared weekly there with crafts for your children. Scripture says in John 4 verse 35, do not say, there are still four months until the harvest. I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are ripe for harvest. Our Every Nation Southern Africa Church is hosting an evangelism conference. Lift up your eyes. Next week, from the 22nd to the 24th of July. Are you ready for God to move? Register on the website, www.ensaevangelism.com. Our We Care Ministry is having a warm clothing for babies in prison drive. Please partner with them with any secondhand baby items you may have or baby toiletries. You can deliver your items to the church office. Our office hours are as follows, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Thursday and 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Fridays. For further inquiries, please contact Auntie Katrina or Rita on the following numbers should you want to provide extra items on 081-842-3166 or 081-250-5559. As you can see, we are in the process of building our building and every dollar counts. You can partner with us through the Pay Today app or you can find our banking details for the building fund on our website on the Give page. Let's join hands together to pray and give towards Vision 2021. Visit our website for any additional information at www.envintuk.org. Good morning, family. It's so great to be with you this morning as we continue our sermon series on God's plan for holiness, consecration, and sanctification. Um, but before we continue with our series or before I do the second installment, I really just want to remind us this morning that we have started our corporate prayer and fasting. Um, so if you're already at breakfast this morning, it's just a reminder, hey, that we are fasting today. And I really just want to encourage everyone that's watching this this morning to just be a part of this fast. It's so important to do corporate fasting together as a church, to pray, to cry out to God, and to just set this time aside to really seek His face and pray, pray for things that are so important in our nation. So we're starting our first corporate prayer meeting tomorrow morning at six in the morning, and then there will be a second one during lunchtime and a third one after work at about six o'clock. So you're welcome to join any one of those prayer slots or all three if you would like to be a part of all the prayer meetings, you're more than welcome. We'll be praying for various uh, national issues and church issues and religious stuff that God has placed on our hearts. So I just want to encourage you for that. Amen. So we started the series on God's plan on holiness, consecration and sanctification. And last week we looked at um, the fact that uh, we're different because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The first thing that we looked at was just uh, emphasizing on the fact that as Christians, 
We are different because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And therefore God has called us out to be holy, to be uh, um, set apart unto him. And the way we live our lives is very different from your everyday person in the world simply because we belong to God and we belong, uh, we belong to God and he's purchased us with that precious blood of Jesus. And so today we're gonna continue by looking at being consecrated by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and fire. But before we continue, I just wanna open up in prayer Father, we thank you so much for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you're doing a, 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 um, a work of sanctification in, the, in our midst. So, oh, Father God, you're, you're, you're reminding us of the fact that we're consecrated, we're set apart, uh, that we belong to you, that we are other, we are different, oh, Father God. And therefore, as we continue with the message today, we pray, Lord, that you will come and impart your spirit, that you will come and transform us from the inside inside to the outside of oh, Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for that. Amen. Amen. Um, please open your Bibles with me to Luke 4, verse 18 to 19. This is the main scripture that I want to read from this morning. And it reads as follows. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is Jesus himself speaking here. And, and, and what we need to understand about this passage is that Jesus just came back from his 40 days in the desert being uh, or wilderness being um, tempted by the devil. And from there, he moved to Galilee, Galilee. And from Galilee, he moved to Nazareth, where now he entered the synagogue and he took the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet that prophesied years before Jesus came into existence about a Messiah that is coming. And this is the portion that he read from that scroll that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to, pro to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Okay? And once he was done, he, he, he wraps the scroll up again, puts it aside, and he says, today, this word has been fulfilled, speaking about himself. Now, Remember, last week, our key scripture was 1 Peter 2 verse 9, which says that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Part of being God's special possession is being marked with the presence of God. And being marked with the presence of God today means that you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. As Jesus was speaking here, when he started off, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit sets us apart from the world. As Christians, we are consecrated unto God in that he has anointed us with his Holy Spirit. And we should never take the Holy Spirit for granted. The Holy Spirit is a very important person in the personhood of God. Okay, so we often speak about the, uh, the Trinity and the Holy Spirit is a very important part of the, the Trinity. And it was God's will and his, his, his heart that we be anointed with the Holy Spirit, that everyone that has come to God through the Son, Jesus Christ, be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Now, in Matthew 3 verse 11, we see how John the Baptist was actually um, sensitizing people to the fact that the Holy Spirit is coming and the fact that it, he is important. He said this in, in, in the scripture, he says, I baptize you with, the water, with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Okay, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He was speaking about the coming of Jesus, that when Jesus comes, he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, the fire that John is speaking ab about here 
is actually the fire of judgment. I know often we love saying, oh Lord, send your fire, pour out your fire on us, oh Father God. We just need to be aware that there are two types of fires that we're speaking about here. We're speaking about the fire of God's presence or the fire of God's judgment, okay? And here, John was speaking about the fire of, 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 of God's judgment. If we continue to, to further read on in that scripture in Matthew, we will see that it actually makes sense. And he was talking about how one is coming and he is going to separate the wheat from the chaff and the wheat he will, he will put in barns, but the chaff will be thrown into fire to burn. And he was warning people saying, produce fruit huh? in, in, in keeping with repentance. If you have repented, if you belong to Jesus, then you produce fruit according to that. Otherwise, the one is coming who's going to baptize by, by, by fire or, or, or the Holy Spirit, which is a separation, okay? But when I speak about fire today, speaking about being anointed by the Holy Spirit and fire, I'm speaking about the Holy Spirit and fire of God's presence over our lives. That's so important to note. In Acts 1 verse 4, Jesus specifically told his disciples not to do anything until they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, signifying the importance of being marked by God's presence and being empowered by the presence of God. And, and the important thing to note about the Holy Spirit um, and being anointed with the Holy Spirit is that it is something that, that, is, that makes us different. Yeah, we are consecrated by that because the world cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Only those that follow Jesus, only true disciples of Jesus can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, can be anointed by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said in John 14 verse 17, he says this, uh, it's so beautiful. He says, the world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you do know him, for he abides with you and will be in you. This is what Jesus is saying to his disciples, saying you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be anointed with the Holy Spirit. He will, it, he will make you different from the world because the world cannot see him. They cannot know him yeah, unless they have relationship with him. And he saw it so fit. He was so glad that he could go back to the Father so that the people that he has discipled all these years will receive that outpouring of the Holy Spirit that empowers them to live the life that God has called them to, to live and sets them apart for God. Okay? So this anointing of the Holy Spirit signifies the fact that we've been marked with the presence of God. It signifies that in our lives, that when I say I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I am marked with the presence of God. God is with me, he's for me, he's, he's, he's wherever I go, I'm surrounded by his presence. And you'll see in the Old Testament, whenever God made himself present, he would always appear like in, in some form, and, and a lot of the times it was in the form of fire. We saw with Moses, he appeared in the burning bush. We saw with, with Elijah, when they were praying for the true God to, to show himself, fire fell from heaven and consumed his, his altar. You know, we, we see how the nation of Israel was chosen, set apart, consecrated unto God and marked by the presence of God because he went with them. We see the, 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 the pillar of fire by night and a, and a cloud by day going with them. They were marked, they were different. The nations around them knew that there's something significantly different about this nation because we've seen God move in their lives. And that is exactly what this does for you and I, my friend. We are significantly different from the world because we've been marked with the presence of God as His Holy Spirit is upon us. We are marked with presence and where we go, we're taking God with Him. We are representing Him to the world. And we should never look at ourselves with our own natural eyes and look at how how we are where we come from those things are not important what is important is that the spirit of God is upon you and he has anointed you for such a time and you rise up in that spirit and you begin to do the things that God has called us to do amen 
The second thing about being consecrated with the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the fact that it signifies that we've been anointed for service anointed for service. And now I've been mentioning this word anointing for, for quite some time now, you know. Um, but what I, I just need to bring out about anointing is that this is something that was very important in biblical times um, where um, somebody will be anointed with anointing oil to set them apart. In fact, that word anointing um, in the Greek there are two words to describe it. The first word is the word kleo, which means to smear or rub with oil and by implication to consecrate for office or religious service. The second word is, um, the, uh, the second word is alefo, which means to anoint. Yeah. So that word, it's that smearing of oil is saying, is, uh, is saying that you are set apart for office. And in biblical times, there were mainly three people that were always anointed to show that these are people that are set apart, that are chosen by God for a specific purpose. And those were kings, priests, and prophets. Every time the Lord called a king, every time he would call a prophet, every time he would call a priest, they will be anointed with oil and set apart for that specific office. And we can see it in the Bible. There's so many passages. I'm not going to go through all of them for the sake of time. But we see in Exodus 29 verse 7 where God gives instructions of how priests were supposed to be anointed and set apart for his pur purposes. And then we see in Exodus 40 verse 9 where, which speaks about how the tabernacle, the house that was built for God, for the dwelling um, of God, was to be anointed with oil to show that it's set apart. In fact, not only the, the tabernacle was anointed, but everything that was in it, the furniture, the, the utensils in there that were used were anointed with oil to, uh, to, 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 to show that these are things that are set apart. They are holy unto God. And then we also see in 1 Samuel 16 how God anointed David. Now, by sending Samuel to, to, to anoint him in front of, of his whole family as king over Israel. So there was always that symbolic um, action that was done to pour oil on any person that was chosen or anything that was chosen set apart to be used by God. But in these last days, God has anointed us who are chosen set apart for him with his Holy Spirit. It is so awesome. And even though we still use anointing oil, we use it as a symbol to say, God is present here. This is the work of the Lord. And I just need to say this. That there's nothing special about the anointing oil. Okay? Before you spend that 500 or 5,000 on that special bottle of anointing oil, just remember that the power is not in the anointing oil. The power is in the presence of the Holy Spirit that comes. And we will see, even in the Old Testament, every time somebody was anointed, set apart, chosen to do a specific task, it will say, and the, the, the Spirit of God will come upon them and they will be empowered with supernatural power to be able to fulfill that task that they were anointed for. Eh? We see that in the life of, 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 of David. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 13, it says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And even with Saul, <laughs> Saul is quite an interesting one because um, when he was anointed with oil, it, the, the Bible actually says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it says that Saul became a different person. Yeah? He was so different to the point that he actually even started prophesying. And the people were looking and thinking, but isn't this just Saul? Is he among the prophets now? And this is exactly what happened with Jesus as well. He was living as a carpenter's son for all these years, gets baptized by John the Baptist with the Holy Spirit, 
and I mean in, in water. And when he was baptized in water, the Holy Spirit comes upon him and is now endowed with power from on high. And, and the voice of God speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, meaning I, am, I have set him apart. I've called him for such a time as this. And then from then onwards, he starts moving in power of the Holy Spirit, destroying the work of the enemy here on earth. And that is what we expect. Yeah, that is what we should expect. And that is what we should know about ourselves. Those that belong to God, those that have called on the name of Jesus, those that have humbled themselves and they said, Lord, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I invite you into my life and surrendered their life to Jesus are marked with the presence of God through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us. And when he, ha when, when he is upon us, he anoints us for service, just as Jesus was anointed for service. In Acts 10 verse 38, the word of God says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. God was with him. He's marked by the presence of God to do the service of God. Okay. He's anointed to do the service of God. We are marked by the presence of God to do the service of God, to do the works that God has set us apart uh, um, to do. And, and so as, 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 as children of God, we need to understand that being consecrated with the Holy Spirit is not just being marked with the presence of God, but also being set apart for the services of God. And what does that service look like? What does it look like? We can look to Jesus to see what he did. It looks like this. Number one, we preach the good news of the gospel. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. God has anointed you to preach the good news of the, of the gospel. There's not a single person that belongs to Jesus that says, I'm a born again Christian. I'm set apart. I belong to God that cannot preach the gospel. Maybe you may be timid or scared or something, but the, the, re, the reality is God has anointed us with his Holy Spirit to be able to preach this good news of the, of, of, of the gospel. And we should be confident to do it wherever we find ourselves, whether it's in the office, whether it's while we are uh, driving with taxis, and especially in the time of, in a time like this where there's so much chaos surrounding us, we shouldn't be people that are giving into the chaos because we're separated from the world. We see differently because we're marked with the presence of God, and we are those that proclaim the good news of the gospel that Jesus died and rose again, and He conquered the works of the enemy, and that is the second thing that we're anointed for to destroy the works of the enemy you know it's it's easy to be in this world and start acting like the world because that is what we're surrounded by but being consecrated means that we are set apart being holy means that we are other we are in this world but we're not a part of it and therefore we're here to represent a different kingdom and the way this kingdom does things is very different from what we see with our naked eye that's surrounding us right now we are here to destroy the work of the devil jesus christ in fact that word christ means anointed one the anointed one has anointed us with his power, with his Holy Spirit, and is living inside of us so that we can do what he did. And so either we can choose to rise up and, and, and look at and, 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 and do the things that Jesus was doing, or we can decide that we're, we're no different. We're just saved sinners. But we're not saved sinners. There is a difference. There is a difference when we come to Jesus. There is a difference. And I always pray this for the church all the time, even for myself. I say, God, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. You say that those that belong to you, things will be different for them because you are with them. When you are with us, things should be different. We shouldn't be people that are just succumbing to sicknesses and just uh, being harassed by the devil left, right, and center and actually giving up and giving into his, his schemes. 
We, we need to be those that rise up, that recognize that we have been anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are standing out and we're pushing back the darkness that wants to surround this nation, the darkness that wants to surround our lives, the darkness that wants to surround our families. We are saying this far and no more. We cannot just stand and say, oh, well, I guess that's how things will be. No, God has anointed us to be different people here on earth. He's anointed us for service to destroy the works of the enemy. Jesus destroyed the works of the enemy here on earth. And he is seated at the right hand side of the father. And he was so happy that he could pour out his spirit over the disciples the, at that time. And whoever they would reach, that we will be the ones that are ruling and reigning here on earth, representing the kingdom of God. And that is the third thing that we're anointed for, to extend the kingdom of God here on earth. That's why we are always praying. Or Jesus taught his disciples. He taught them to pray this prayer. After everything else has been mentioned, he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. We are here to extend the kingdom of God in heaven as it is in heaven. Yeah. The kingdom, to extend the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Sorry. We're here to extend the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is what God has anointed us for. The Holy Spirit upon our lives is not just so that we can enjoy him and enjoy his presence and enjoy the fact that we carry him. He is here for a purpose. We are anointed for service. And that service is unto God. And then the next thing that the Holy Spirit signifies in our lives is that he signifies sanctification in our lives. We are, the primary agent of sanctification is actually the Holy Spirit. You know, Pastor Chris was speaking about how sanctification is the process of being made holy. We become more like Jesus, more like God, through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is not us that purify ourselves, even though we need to apply ourselves, if we, there are disciplines that we need to apply in our lives, but the true change, the transformation for us to come from that place of being worldly and carnal to that place where we are desiring the things of God and the things of the Spirit more than the things of the flesh, it is a work that is being done by the Holy Spirit in our lives. As we're moving and as we're, as we're living this life, gazing upon the, the, the face of our Father, praying to Him and, and, and constantly spending time with Him, the Holy Spirit is working in us, giving us revelation so that we may know Him more and we may understand His ways more and we may be empowered to live the life that God has called us to live. We cannot be comfortable with sin and living a life full of sin if we're carrying the Holy Spirit inside of us because He is the Spirit that convicts us. He is the Spirit that sanctifies us. He is the Spirit that is constantly holding us back saying, wait a minute, that is not something that will glorify the Father. He works in us to will and to do the work of the Lord. He works in us to become more like Christ. You know, sometimes we're so focused on the power of the Holy Spirit. We're saying, man, the Holy Spirit is upon me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, but the Holy Spirit also empowers us to live out the values of the kingdom of heaven. He empowers us to become agents of change here on earth, to display what Jesus was displaying. The love, the peace, the kindness, the gentleness, the self-control, that is the fruit of the Spirit in us. And He works in us like that. I want to read a few scriptures that speak about that. 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 1 verse 2 says, who have, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. The Spirit sanctifies us. Romans 15 verse 16 says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, 
being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Second Thessalonians 2, 3, 13, but we should always thank God for you brothers who are loved by the Lord because God has chosen you from the beginning to be saved by the sanctification of the spirit and by faith in the truth. It is the Holy Spirit that is constantly working in us to be more like what God wants us to be, to be holy, to be set apart, to desire the things that God desires for us. It is the Holy Spirit that works in us to be transformed and to be changed from the inside to the outside. You know, that's why I always say, I really find it amazing when you, when you preach the gospel to someone and they say, no, no, I understand this is really important but I first need to go change some things in my life first before I can accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. My friend, you will not be able to change yourself. You cannot change yourself. It is the Holy Spirit that changes us. That's why the Word of God says, come as you are. You come as you are. And as you come by faith, the Lord will make sure that His Holy Spirit works in you to change you, to become the person that He's called you to be according to His ways. Jesus is a standard of purity and He has invited us into that purity to be holy, to, to, to live lives that are pure. But we cannot do it in this carnal nature. That's why He's given us His Holy Spirit. Now, if you're saying, I can't accept Jesus, I first need to change my life and make myself holy before I come to Him, that is a deception. <laughs> Maybe you can and you'll perform and you'll pretend for a season, but to be able to really live that life, we need the Holy Spirit. We need Him in our lives to change us from the inside out. So friends, I just wanna say this this morning. The, we are consecrated, which means we're set apart. We belong to God by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And His presence in our lives signifies that we've been marked with the presence of God. We've been anointed for service for God. And we are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Daily, He's working in our lives to make us more like Him. And right now, I just wanna pray for us this morning, even as we're setting aside this time to, to fast I want to pray for us to remember the Holy Spirit. And if you're watching this and you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you, speak to your connect leader to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do come and join Victory Encounter. Call the office. We will make a plan. But you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to, to be empowered, to be empowered with power from heaven to be able to live the life that God has called us to live. That life of being set apart, marked by His presence, set apart for service unto Him, and being empowered to live a standard of purity and morality that He requires of us, that we cannot do on our own. I wanna encourage you this morning to really search your heart and come before the Lord and say, Lord, I desire that. Let us just pray right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just want to thank you so much for your presence, oh Father God. That even as we entered this fast, this, this day, Lord Jesus, with just that heart of being consecrated, set apart for you, and as we remember the awesome God that you are in our lives, we're coming before you this morning and we say, Lord, will you pour out more of your spirit over our lives, oh Lord Jesus. May, may you pour out your spirit over our lives, oh Father God, that the world will see and those around us will see, oh Father God, that indeed we are different, oh Father God. Even as you had chosen your people, Israel, and the nations around them were able to see that they're different because of your presence in, in their lives and the mighty works that you were doing in and through their lives. I pray this morning, oh Father God, that we will see that in our own lives as well, oh Father God, that we will not just be taking 
day by day just living like everybody else is living, oh Father God, but that we will experience the power of the Holy Spirit. We will, we will walk around as those that are anointed for such a time as this, oh Father God. We will push back darkness in our midst, oh Father God. We will declare the presence of God wherever we go, oh Father God, and we will stand as representative of Jesus Christ here on earth, oh Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you have empowered us. You have set us apart to be different, oh Father God, by the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And therefore this morning, I pray, Lord, for every person, even those that have been feeling discouraged in their spirits, feeling like there's no difference between me and my and my friend and my colleague who doesn't know the Lord. Bless, Lord, remind them this morning that there is a difference, oh Father God, that you are inside of them, that you have empowered them to be different, oh Father God. And I pray, Lord, that our, our lives will be marked with the presence of God, oh Lord Jesus. I thank you already for the testimonies that have been coming out of your goodness, oh Father God. And I pray this morning that you will continue to move in our lives. You'll continue to strengthen us. You'll continue, oh Father, to display your splendor and your glory through our lives, oh Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for that, Lord. We praise you for that this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead. And remember that you are anointed. So just as we're praying and we're fasting and we're seeking him, I really want to encourage you to be part of prayer this week. Don't, don't, don't let this be a, a private fast. Be part of the body. Let it be a corporate fast. Join us in those Zoom prayer meetings and let us seek the face of God together. Let us be empowered together. Let us encourage each other together and let us live out the life that Christ has called us to live in, in His name. Amen. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.